How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to the Salamander Wilds and in this video I'm going to be going over how to build an aquatic adult eastern newt tank. And on my workstation here I have a few things I'm going to be using for this setup. The first thing I'm going to use is this eco planted aquarium substrate which is basically just a gravel layer. Now gravel is not going to be used here as a main substrate as it could be harmful for my newts if swallowed. I'm going to be using a two layer substrate method for this. This gravel layer which will help to promote the plant growth and also give the plants something to anchor down as they root so that they don't become dislodged later and then I'll be utilizing an aquatic soil as the top layer which will provide all the nutrients for the plants. Now this is essentially just crushed lava rock and this layer should work quite nicely for the plants to root themselves. It should also allow for gas exchange between the bottom layer and the top layer as well. And unlike sand, this substrate won't compact on the roots either. Next up is the aquatic soil layer, which is going right over the gravel. This is the same stuff that is typically used in cherry shrimp setups. And this stuff is pretty safe for aquatic newts and salamanders. If it is swallowed, it should be small enough for your animal to pass through. This is definitely my go-to substrate because it is safe and it gives such a natural look to the enclosure. And of course, it promotes plant growth. Now, that being said, this aquatic soil definitely tends to be pricey. So if you're on a budget, this may not be for you, but the benefits are worth it. And in my case, I had to buy enough to cover a 55 gallon tank. But because I've tried this method before, I have seen success with it. So I knew this was the way to go for this setup. Now, of course, your tank setup doesn't have to be as elaborate as mine but I really like the idea of having a natural looking enclosure for my animals. At this point, I'm just spreading out the aquatic soil to cover any gravel that I may have missed and just try to get rid of some of these big mounds and create more of an even layer of substrate. And again, I really wanna make sure that gravel here is not exposed in any way because I don't wanna create any sort of hazards to my newts. And because aquatic soil is a pretty loose substrate, I went ahead and made sure that I have a thick enough layer so that gravel does not get exposed to the surface. And during this time while I set up the new enclosure, I've placed the eastern newts in a temporary setup where I can still feed them and take care of them as needed. At this point, I decided to start putting in some of the wood pieces that I had, and these are the same pieces of wood from the previous setup. Now, they already have some plant growth, including moss, so I thought it would be best just to recycle these for the new setup. It didn't make any sense really to start over from scratch when I didn't have to. You can also see that I'm using plenty of spider wood in this setup. Spider wood is one of my favorite types of wood to use in an enclosure, and you can see here that I have plenty of plant growth, including moss and even a little fern growing on the surface of the wood as well, so it just delivers a really nice natural looking feel to the whole enclosure. At this point, I did start to add aquatic plants to the enclosure. And since I will definitely mispronounce the names of these plants, I'll just leave the name right on the screen. And so the first plant I decided to go with is a cardinal plant. This plant is typically used as a mid-ground plant, so it will grow out quite a bit, which will provide plenty of cover for the newts if they want to hang out in the plant. And the requirements for this plant also fall well into the temperature range that the eastern newts also require. The next plant that I went with is the long stem plant shown here, American Pondweed. This plant also naturally occurs in many of the places that an eastern newt would call home. So I thought this was a really great pick for this enclosure. But this is actually where I made a mistake and this plant is something not to pick for eastern newts. I really should have known before purchasing this plant, but this plant in particular requires much warmer temperatures and it simply just did not last in the cooler waters that are in this tank. However, this plant shown here was definitely the better pick between the two since it has a denser plant growth and is better suited for the enclosure. I also went with floating frogbit to provide 
more plant cover and security to the newts, and to give a more aesthetically pleasing feel to the enclosure. But as you'll notice here, I started running into a few issues as I started to develop a green algae film at the surface of the water. And as the other plants would continue to grow, this algae film would also continue to persist throughout the coming weeks as well. The thing is, I just simply didn't have enough plants growing in the tank to combat the algae. A lot more plants were needed for this 55 gallon tank that I did not have at the beginning of setting everything up. It was definitely going to be an uphill battle against this algae, and I really needed to purchase more plants. But I also needed to do a few water changes to make sure I get rid of some of the algae in the process as well. But at this stage, a lot of the plants were growing in quite nicely, including the ferns. At about three weeks in, the green film at the top has finally dissipated, and the plants are growing in quite nicely. The ferns and moss are looking really nice here, and I even have this one sort of weed or plant that is growing flowers, so that's also a nice touch. And the frog bit that was struggling before is doing a little bit better as well. The pondweed stems have also grown out quite a bit here, but I also ran into another issue. Even though the green film at the surface is gone, the substrate at the bottom now has a ton of algae growth and even the sides of the glass. However, when I noticed the beginning of this growth, I did go and get a few snails and shrimp to start acting as the cleanup crew for this enclosure. And we can even see this little fella right here doing the job that he was set to do. Three weeks in and these snails have cleaned up quite a lot here, so they've already been very beneficial. I might even add a few more snails while I'm at it. During this time, I also took the opportunity to add a few more plants just for good measure, including the Taiwan moss at the top on the spiderwood. And with everything going on, I noticed this crazy surprise, a larval Easter newt in the tank. And I have no idea when this newt even hatched inside this tank because I never saw any egg laying. Maybe it was attached to one of the pieces of wood, but I never saw anything so it was really quite the surprise and it's clearly been in here for quite some time and feeding on something because it even already has its front legs the adults have not been introduced to this setup yet so yeah no idea when this happened but definitely crazy was not expecting that five weeks in and the snails have done their job reducing the algae almost completely the ghost shrimp in the enclosure are also doing very well, keeping the substrate clean and also contributing to the ecosystem in the tank, which has also helped to reduce the algae. The snails, however, are actually doing quite well. In fact, they're thriving. So much so that they're actually breeding and I have plenty of snail eggs all around the enclosure attached to the glass and the plants. Snail eggs can actually be seen as I pan across in this shot here too. But these snails have really proven beneficial and I was actually quite relieved to see just how much algae has disappeared from the whole setup. The plants are also growing in quite nicely from the aquatic plants to the terrestrial plants. And I was also quite surprised at just how well the ferns are doing, in particular because there's no soil in the setup at all. The moss is also looking really, really good here, continuing to thrive on top of the spider wood. And it'll look that much better as it continues to spread. Now, one thing that has definitely contributed to the plant growth is actually the plant light that I'm using. It's the Fluval LED plant light, which has been really, really beneficial for the setup as well. At this point, it was time to introduce the adult Easter newts into their new enclosure. And the first one here is being taken out and introduced into this vivid new world. And one by one, I continue to take them out the temporary setup and release them into the 55 gallon tank. Just simply watching them float down to the substrate or swim frantically away as they are released from my hand. And honestly, I found this quite amusing because they were so eager to come up to me in the first place. 
but I continued to do this until all nine adult Easter newts were finally in their new home. At this point, all the newts have been introduced and they can all be seen here swimming around, some hanging out in the plants, getting used to the new setup. And amid everything going on, one of them took notice of me and decided to come right up to me, all the way up to the glass. But I wasn't able to hold his attention for too long because he just ended up walking away very quickly. And with all the frantic swimming, one thing immediately stood out. These newts were hungry and wanted food already. And so food is what I was going to give them. So I'll wrap up the video here and let that video clip roll. And if you all enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below. Let me know which part of this setup you liked the most. And also let me know your thoughts and opinions on it. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Your support is very much appreciated. And until next time, I hope you'll all join me for another adventure into the Salamander Wilds.